Now let's have a look at the observations. So our basic setup was as follows. A robot stood somewhere with a certain heading. So this is the robot's position as reflected by the state, but the scanner has a certain offset. And so if the heading angle is theta, the position of the laser will be XL, YL, and XL, YL simply will be XY, the robot state, plus the scanner displacement times the cosine and sine of the heading angle theta. Now the robot observes a landmark and the bearing angle relative to the heading will be alpha and the distance as a readout of the laser scanner will be r. And this way we obtained the two measurement equations r is xm, the landmark's position, m for map, xm minus xl squared plus ym minus yl squared and the square root of this, whereas the bearing angle alpha is the arctangent of ym minus yl divided by xm minus xl minus theta, the heading angle. And so those two equations made up our measurement function h, which was dependent on x, y and theta. So it is a function of three variables, which computes two values. And so we computed the partial derivatives of h with respect to the state, which we denoted as capital H. So this was a two times three matrix consisting of the partial derivative of R with respect to X, with respect to Y and with respect to theta and the same for alpha. And those computations were based on the assumption that our landmarks are fixed. So the coordinates XM and YM of the landmark, they are assumed to be constants. And so they're not part of the arguments the function H takes. But now we have a different situation. Now our landmarks become unknown as well. And so our function h changes and it's now a function of x, y and theta as well as the landmarks x coordinate and y coordinate. So it is important to understand that we do not modify our observation equation at all. The only difference is that previously we thought of xm and ym as being constants and now we think of them as being variables which are part of our state. So that means we have to augment our Jacobian matrix by the derivatives with respect to xm and ym. And so we get the following. We get our old matrix. And in addition, we get the partial derivatives with respect to xm and ym for both components of our function. So now we need to compute these. First, let's have a look at r. So r is the square root of the square differences in x and y. Now let's compute the partial derivative with respect to xm. And this is quite similar to what we did earlier in the Kalman filter unit. So if we denote the term under the square root as q, so let's just define q is xm minus xl squared plus ym minus yl squared. So the derivative will be 1 divided by 2 times the square root of q times the derivative of the term under the root, which is 2 times xm minus xl. So this is simply xm minus xl divided by the square root of q. Now if we do the same for y, you see by the symmetry of those terms, we obtain a similar result with x replaced by y. And so these are the two terms we need to implement. Now let's do the same thing for alpha. So as you remember, alpha was the arctangent of ym minus yl divided by xm minus xl minus theta the heading angle. So the partial derivative with respect to xm is the derivative of the arctangent. And so remember, this is one divided by one plus x squared. And so we have one divided by one plus the argument squared times the derivative of the argument, which is minus one divided by the denominator squared times the numerator times the partial derivative of the denominator with respect to xm, which is one. And so we obtain minus ym minus yl divided by q. And by a similar computation, we obtain for the partial derivative with respect to ym, xm minus xl divided by q. And so these are the other two results we have. So now let's put together our matrix H. So remember, this will be two times five in the current case. And let's set the following abbreviations. So delta x is xm minus xl, delta y is ym minus yl, and q will be the same as in our previous definition, it will be delta x squared plus delta y squared. And so our matrix has to be two times five. Now these are the components regarding R. These are the components regarding alpha. And so the partial derivative with respect to x is something you'll have to look up. We obtained this value 
when we computed the age matrix for our extended Kalman filter. And so we found out this is minus delta x divided by the square root of q. And this was delta y divided by q. And here we obtained minus delta y divided by the square root of q and minus delta x divided by q. Now the partial derivatives with respect to theta were a bit more complicated. They were d, the displacement, divided by the square root of q times delta x, the sine of theta, minus delta y, the cosine of theta, and minus d divided by q times this term, minus 1. Now let's have a look at the partial derivative with respect to xm. This is what we just computed. It is delta x divided by the square root of q, and with respect to alpha, it is minus delta y divided by q. And with respect to ym, we have delta y divided by the square root of q and delta x divided by q. So this is the 2 times 5 matrix h. Now fortunately, we already have implemented this entire part when we implemented our extended Kalman filter. So the only additional thing we'll have to implement is this. But now if you have a close look, you will see the following. This subpart is actually the same as this times minus 1. So all we'll have to do in our new implementation is to call the old code and grab that 2 times 2 sub matrix, multiply this by minus 1 and put it here. Now when you implement this, keep in mind that we do not have only one landmark, but probably we have more of those. And so our entire matrix H will be 2 times 3 plus 2 times the number of landmarks. So the matrix will look like that in general. We'll have the derivative with respect to x, y and theta here in the first three columns and we will have all the landmarks here. So for every landmark I will have a 2 times 2 matrix here and so say landmark j will be somewhere here and so if we have an observation between the current state and the landmark j we will have to compute all those values involving x, y and theta of the current state and x, m, y, m of the landmark j and we will have to put the 2 times 3 submatrix here as usual and copy the 2 times 2 submatrix of this here times minus 1 so this entire matrix times minus 1 to this 2 times 2 submatrix and remember in Python indices start at 0 so this will be at index 3 and this will be at index 3 plus 2 J. So in order to set up this matrix, compute those values basically by calling the old function for computing the matrix H, make new matrix of that dimension, then copy this part here, copy the negative of this part to the appropriate index and make sure all the other values are zero. Now let's implement this. So I prepared slam9c slam correction question and as usual we start with the class and I've made two modifications to the constructor. Now we also get the standard deviations for the distance and angle as parameters and we store them in the corresponding member variables. Then here's the function g we had earlier, the derivative with respect to the state, the derivative with respect to control and all this is unchanged of course. Then here we have the prediction and you will have to put in here your previous code of the prediction and your previous code to add a landmark. Now here comes the interesting part. Now this is our measurement equation and this is just copied from our extended Kalman filter. And this is the partial derivative of our measurement function with respect to the state and this returns our original 2 times 3 Jacobian matrix which we denoted by a capital H. So now here comes the first interesting part, the correction function. And so this needs the measurement, which is the range and the angle, and the landmark. However, the landmark is not constant anymore, but rather it is part of our state. So instead of giving the function fixed landmark coordinates, we now give it the index of the landmark that is involved in the measurement. And so here in the first line, we get the landmark coordinates simply from our state by grabbing the x and y value from the appropriate indices of the state. And then we call the function that returns the Jacobian matrix. But now, as this is just the 2 times 3 matrix and not the full matrix, I have denoted this as H3. Now your task is to set up the full H matrix, as we just described. And then, amazingly, all the rest of the code is just copied from our extended Kalman filter without any modification. Now here are the helper functions 
and we introduced all of them earlier. Let's have a look at main. We have the robot constants, as usual. Now we have added the constants for the cylinder extraction, and I have set a relatively large radius for the maximum cylinder distance. We have our filter constants, these are the errors for the movement, and now I added the standard deviation for the distance measurement and the angle measurement. And if you remember, those used to be 200 millimeters and 15 degrees. And so I set them much larger because then it is much easier later on to understand how the filter works. Here we have our usual start position. Here the covariance matrix and both are not different from our last settings. Here we initialize our extended Kalman filter. Now with the added values of the distance and angle standard deviation. Here we now have to read also the scan data and not only the motor data. And then here is our common filter loop. So first the prediction step and then the correction step. Now for the correction we have to do the landmark assignment and this is all solved in the get observations function which is imported at the beginning of the module. So this uses the scan data and the thresholds for detecting the cylinders, Kalman filter data and the maximum distance of a cylinder. And so what this does is, it takes the robot's measurement, determines the coordinate in world coordinates and checks if there is a cylinder close to this point and obtains the cylinder coordinates from the list of all cylinders that we have instantiated so far and which is in our current state. Now if this is the case, if there is a cylinder closer than max cylinder distance, it will return the index of that cylinder. And if not, it will return minus one. So for each cylinder that is detected in our measurements, it will return an observation, which is a tuple that contains the original measurement, so the radius and angle, the cylinder in world coordinates, which is this, the cylinder in scanner coordinates, which are actually only used for visualization, and the cylinder index, which is either the true index or minus one. In any case, it will return this observation tuple. Now if the cylinder index is minus one, we call this function, which we programmed previously, to add a new cylinder and we use the world coordinates returned as part of this observation tuple to instantiate the x and y of this new cylinder. And we get back the cylinder index, which we then use to call our common filter correct function. So either we get the index of an existing cylinder, then we will use that directly here, or we get minus one, then we will take the index of our newly created cylinder and give that to the correct function of our common filter. Now down here we already introduced all those functions. So we write position and orientation of the robot. We write the covariance matrix of the robot. We write the positions of all landmarks that are currently part of our state and also the error ellipses that are currently part of our state. And this is the only new thing. We also write the cylinders that we get as part of the observations in the cylinder coordinate system. This is just for visualization. Now after you implemented this, when you run it, it will produce the extended Kalman filter slam correction dot text. Now load this and you will see the following. Our robot is here. Here are our landmarks, which were already observed in our start position. And then as we move, the uncertainties in our landmarks get smaller and smaller. And we get a really smooth trajectory. But let's have a look at this in a moment. Please first implement the correction step of the extended Kalman filter slam.